What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, apologies for sounding a bit like a giant nose. Uh, I'm still getting over a cold. I just didn't want to delay this video anymore. Uh, my last three videos were on the Behind the Layers series, so I figured it was time to do another Design That Track one. So let's run that intro and see what track we have for this episode. All right, so real quick for anyone who doesn't know how this series works. Essentially, I take the lyrics of a song and I make a design based around it. It could be what I think the song means, what it means to me, uh, something it might remind me of. There's no real right or wrong here. It's kind of up for interpretation. That is unless you think this song is about giraffes. Um, you're probably wrong there because it's, it's definitely not about giraffes. So the song I chose for this episode is Rose of Sharon by the band Killswitch Engage. It's always been one of my all time favorite metal tracks. And I'm sure some keyboard warriors are gonna get in the comments and be like, Kill Switch isn't metal bro, they're scream core, metal core, catchy chorus core, something lame like that. And so for you, I have this jar right here. As you can see, it's filled with all the I give. So if you're not really into metal, it might be a bit hard to listen to that song. So there's a really good cover by a band named Boomin. Uh, it's all acoustic, there's some violin, some piano. It's really, really well done. Uh, I'll put links to both versions of the song in the description. And with that, let's start this voyage and see how this design came together. So I started this one in Blender. I was actually gonna do the entire piece in Blender, but I just felt like I'd be cheating on Photoshop. And let's face it, Photoshop is bae. Hey baby girl. So the first thing I did was set up a ground plane and added a bunch of grass and flowers to it via particle systems using Botanique and Graswald. I like Graswald because you can adjust the wetness of the grass, which maybe you can also do in Botanique, um, but I wanted to have that wetness just to get some specular light on the grass. From there, I set up an HDRI and then a background image that I set as an emitter, just so it would cast some light on the grass in a similar color. Lastly, I set up my camera. Went with a focal length of 85 millimeters and an aperture of 2.8 so I could get some really nice depth of field of, well, this field. I added some glare and lens distortion in the compositor and hit render. We'll come back to Blender in a bit. Next was adding in the characters. I was having trouble finding the right look to match the story out of the stock photos I was sorting through, so I opened up another cool program called Daz. If you don't know Daz, it's a really cool 3D program where you can buy characters, clothes, poses, all sorts of stuff and render them out. Unfortunately, getting the models to look good in Blender does not work well, uh, at least not for me. If you know how to do this, uh, I'd love to learn. Anyway, I went with this World War II army theme because it just resonated with the lyrics of the song. So I set up this woman character, gave her an outfit, and posed her as if she was sitting by a grave. Now for the soldier. I put him in a World War II outfit and posed him right behind her as if he was reaching out to comfort her. I turned all the layers off on him and just rendered her out as a PNG that I was going to use in Photoshop. For him, I exported him as an OBJ file with no materials. I went back over to Blender and placed him in my scene around the area he would be. Now it was time to kind of give him that spirit look. So I saw a tutorial a while ago from Ducky3D. Check out his channel, it's great. He showed a cool way to get these glowing lines around objects. So I set the material kind of like how he did, an emission node, mix node, color ramp, and a layer weight. I messed with the settings to get this look. Then I duplicated the soldier and made another material with a similar effect that showed more of the outline of the character and less of the inside details. I'll combine these later in Photoshop. From here, I rendered out three images. The first one was the soldier with the more defined outlines. The second was the soldier with a smooth kind of gradient on the inside. And then I went into Eevee and rendered out a bloom pass. The bloom pass is crucial. Now it's time to get into Photoshop. I dropped in my grass render and then added curves to darken it a bit and selective color to add a bit more orange and magenta to it. The sky is made up of these three images. I dropped the first one in and placed it where the horizon would be. I loved the cloud formations in the second image, so I added that one, masked out the bottom, and then used Blend If to make them more seamless. Lastly, I used this overcast sky image and masked it towards the top just to bring in those darker clouds. I made a few adjustments like cutting out the mountains from the first image and putting them on their own layer so I could adjust their height and position as I wanted. Next, I placed the woman, the soldier, and the gravestone, which I warped a bit to match the perspective more. And guess where I got the gravestone from? You guessed it, Envato Elements, the sponsor of today's video. 
Why do I love Envato Elements? Because they aren't just a site for designers. They're for all kinds of content creators. They have so much more than just stock photos. They have tons of fonts, video templates, logo animations, video intros, video transitions, music and sound effects. It's all here. An arsenal of assets for you to use. And best of all, you can download as many as you want. There's no limits like other sites have. Use the code in my description to try it out for a month or a year. I bet you'll end up keeping the subscription. Okay, back to the project. So many of you were asking how I made this ghost effect. And I didn't go all out with this one like I did in my ghost in the library piece or uh, the hand coming out of the TV piece. Because this is supposed to be more of like his spirit rather than an actual, you know, grab a proton pack and let's blast this mother So with the three renders I had, I put the soft one down first, placed it in screen mode, which removed all the black from it. Then the outline layer, again in screen mode, and then lastly the bloom pass, again in screen mode. All of them being in screen mode removes the black and just helps that transparency come through. He was a bit hard to see, so I made a selection of his body, hid the layers, and copied the background mountains and sky in that shape. Then I pasted those behind the soldier and put them in, I believe, multiply mode, uh, just to darken that area a bit so he was easier to see. Cool, now let's do the chick. Let me rephrase that. Let's make our lovely edits to the woman. So I added selective color to make her colors match the scene more and then curves to darken her. I then painted some light back in on the curves layer mask. Next I added some hue and saturation layers, check the colorize box, and match them to the background lighting. Then I used Blend If to make them only affect areas where there weren't dark shadows. I then painted around the edges as a base for my highlights. From there, I took the soft round brush and painted my rim lights around her. I exaggerated them a bit as I like how they add a bit more drama to the piece. Next was her hair. I used a hairbrush to paint around the outsides of her hair to look a bit like those lighter strands are catching the light. I did this behind the hair flowing to the left and then on the back and top of her head. I then painted on a layer above the hair just to lighten up the edges, as well as duplicated her, hid the fill and added inner shadows to lighten certain areas around the hair more. Then I went in and hand painted more strands over top. There isn't really a one button click for this. It takes time and patience and uh, you may have to redo it a few times. I don't even think the version in this recording is the one I used in the final piece. I think I redid it because I wasn't happy with the first attempt. Okay, let's tackle this gravestone now. I didn't realize my recording wasn't going when I did this part, so I gotta just turn on and off layers for this one. I added a camera raw filter and upped the texture and clarity just so the textures would come through a bit more. From there, I added a curves layer to darken the entire thing, and then another curves layer just to darken the outer side of it. Then I added selective color to adjust my colors, and then one more curves layer to darken a few more areas on the front. After that, I painted my rim lights the same way I painted them on the woman. Soft round brush, and then using hue and saturation layers with colorize and blend it. I did do one little trick though. If you've seen my Jurassic Park video, 
I do this in there too. I wanted some of the smaller details to be brighter on the front of it, like they were catching light. So I used color range, made a selection of some of the brighter areas on the front, then pasted that layer on top of the grave, put it in soft light, and then added a gradient map to it. It's super subtle, but I think it helped give a bit more dimension and realism. Lastly, I made some text for the front of it. I combined the names of the singer and guitarist who wrote the song, put the dates that the character lived, and then some lyrics from the song. I simply warped the perspective to fit the stone and then messed with the bevel and embossed layer style to make it look etched into the grave. And with that, I think it's done. Oh my gosh, I forgot about the leaves. And here I was, just about to leave. So for the leaves, I snagged these images from texture.com, placed them into a Photoshop document, and saved them out as a PNG. Then I went into Blender, imported that image as a plane, added loop cuts, then separated each as their own object. I then added subdivisions to each, pulled on some of the vertices just to make sure they weren't flat, and adjusted their textures a bit and added them to a particle system. Then it was just messing with the gravity and a few other settings as well as adding wind and a turbulence force field. And then bam, I had some blowing leaves. I rendered out about nine different frames from the animation and brought those back into Photoshop. I found my favorites, combined them, and masked some areas out until I had this. I added a brightness and contrast to them to darken them, and then painted some light back on them to really integrate them into the scene more. I then dropped in this image of a lens flare just to up the dramatic lighting a bit, and then it was time for the magic to happen, the color grading. I don't have this part recorded as I usually just go in and mess with settings until I get something I like, but I will say, check out the filters under profile at the top. I use these in almost all of my pieces. They really make everything look cohesive. I was also kind of bored with the straight on angle I had, so I used a lens correction effect to tilt the image, which I don't know, it kind of just gave it a unique look. And there we have it, the final piece. All right, I feel like I always say this, but I'm stoked on how this one turned out. I was honestly stuck on this for a while. I tried adding all this stuff to it to make it more interesting, but honestly, at the end of the day, sometimes simple is better. It didn't need more because the story is there. All right, so if you read the lyrics of the song, it's clearly about someone who's lost a loved one. Uh, you know, they're talking about how numb and broken they are. Uh, what were the last words they said to them? If they could turn back time. If I could turn back time. Different song. Anyways, all things that would definitely be going through someone's mind in this kind of a situation. It's a sad theme, but when you read the lyrics, especially in the chorus and you hear it won't be long, we'll meet again, there's definitely that comfort knowing that they will be reunited again. All right, so if you follow me on Instagram, I told people to listen to the song and make a design based around the lyrics, and I'd feature my favorite one at the end of this video. The entry I selected as the winner of this one is by my good friend, Sean, also known as Exolorian. I hope I'm saying your name right. He just did a fantastic job with this piece. Um, the story's there, you know, the reflection in the mirror of his daughter, uh, all the items like around the chair and everything. It's just, it's one of those pieces that makes you look at it and your eyes kind of travel throughout it. Um, and you can tell their story behind it. You can tell there's meaning behind it. Uh, it's just executed really, really well. So well done, man. If you want a chance to be featured at the end of the next episode, make sure you're following me on Instagram because that's where I'll announce the next song. And if you have suggestions for which song should be next, please leave them in the comments and I will... Definitely read them, but probably not go with your suggestion. <laughs> also, I try to update some of the posters that are behind me for every single episode. I'll link all the artists in the description below. Uh, their work's incredible. They're way more talented than me. So if you're supporting me, uh, you should be supporting them too. And with that, I'll see you guys on our next voyage.